backyard terraria. Starting with the pickle jar this time. There's not... Plant life isn't regrowing, but the algae is really starting to spread and take off, which is good to see that there's something. I haven't seen that worm that we saw a few weeks ago in here since. But there's a lot of places that aren't near the glass that he could be hanging out, so I'm not too concerned about it. If the algae's growing, then maybe there's something, you know, generating energy for him to consume and live off of. It's mosquito season again in San Antonio. that a little closer to the center of the picture. So algae is still booming in the base. This plant is really looking very good. I'm still quite pleased with it. I thought there was... Maybe it's not this one. Right, in here, something it has been here for a couple weeks, but I only just now noticed that there is this little chickweed plant you know how couldn't get any of the ones we transplanted to survive, but this one is sprouted and it seems to be doing just fine. So I think it was a transplant. I think it's a chicken plant. I suppose it could be something else, but it suggests that we've had all of this dead stuff just couldn't be transplanted effectively. Um, but it's not that it couldn't survive in here, it's that the experience of being uprooted and dropped back in killed it. Whereas the onion has done uh, right, the onion's not in this one. What was I thinking was an onion? This is just the reflection. Uh, the clover is doing really well in here. There's another plant has sprouted up there, and there's a fair amount of algae growing in the base. But I don't see any insects, so anything that got transported in probably died a while ago. I was looking over the old videos and I realized part of why this may be doing better than some of the others is because it got less water. It uh, ate strawfuls instead of a uh, tablespoon. Um, otherwise, Creeping Fig is still alive. It's doing better than a lot of the others in this generation. And the onion is doing alright, but I haven't seen it. It doesn't seem to be really growing anymore which is interesting. I wonder if it's able to arrest its growth when it realizes it can't expand. Or maybe there's just a whole wad of it up in the lid here, and I just can't see it because it's under this. Um, and there's really not much way for me to tell. But everything's still alive. Hasn't died, it's been over a month in there. And by way of comparison, if you want to look at this creeping fig versus this one, these are the same plant. You can definitely see how this one is distinctly greener and this one's much more of an ugly brownish yellow color. Um, I'm still attributing to the water, but it could be this one I think has coffee grounds in the base and the other doesn't, so it could also be that just there's too much organic material in here and it decays. This roly poly has gotten more and more of a red pink color as time has gone on. I mean, it's obviously dead, but it's interesting to see the way it has decayed to such a bright red color. Again, suggests maybe an atmospheric thing that it's you know, there's some chemical has been produced by the decay of everything in there and that's what's causing uh, causing everything to die here this had the little hackberry tree looks pretty much the same as the creeping fig 
in the other... I don't know why it does that. Camera lost focus. Uh, it's a little tricky to see because it's in the far side, the only clear way to get a look at it, but it is that same yellow-brown color as the creeping fig is. And since that's the only real main kind of life in there, it uh, makes it likely that we're not really going to see anything living in here. Maybe a little algae, but that really only does well in the dirt. And since these 1.1 terraria deliberately had less dirt in them than the 1.0, I think for the most part we will see less, less algal, algal growth in the soil. But maybe it can survive on that rock that we put in this one. And then in the nothing terrarium, all we have is a little bit of algae in the base. There had been some sprouts, but they don't seem to have come back. And the rock covers most everything else, so there's anything in the middle probably can't, can't really grow, which is a shame, but his lesson learned, don't cover all of the soil that could grow life with a rock. Probably not worth a video for that. And the last thing is this terrarium, another 1.0 that we put out here to rejuvenate. Does not seem to be doing anything. In fact, there's a little scum on the glass on the outside. It doesn't even really seem to be any algae in the soil. So, it's only been out here, I don't know, a couple weeks. Um, but, it's already gotten dirty. And the, this part of the lid came off, but otherwise, nothing really, nothing of note in here yet. That's all for the backyard. So I am recording this... Well, it's still in the kitchen, but I have moved all of the terraria because, as you can hopefully see, this window seems to be getting more light now than this window where I had everything. Mainly because the tree outside has grown leaves again because it's spring, so now it's shading everything, whereas this side, uh, there isn't a tree doing that. So, that is, I think, worth noting, because it affects the amount of light that these get, and that seems to be sort of the main thing dictating their growth. Um, and in here we have, I put the other, uh, the other grass outside, um, just so it could get more light. It seems to need more light. Uh, well, these may too, but as you can see, this seems to be still alive and healthier than it does in the terraria, but the ivy has become sort of wilted and limp. This end might always have been, but all of these leaves have started to wilt. So I tried to add a little bit more soil and water, but um, that is something to note that even outside of a terrarium, there is some transplanting stress, um, and it may not be getting may not be getting enough light. And I could put it outside, um, since that's where the terrarium with it is. So that might be a better comparison. Uh, this plant, same as before, is still brown. You know, it's sealed in here, so it probably isn't really going to rot, it's just going to be mummified. But who knows, we will see over time. This terrarium, similar situation. Still, really the main thing we're looking for is to see whether this lichen or moss... Um, see if you can get it clearly. See if that turns green again, or if it just stays dead forever. Um, 
this is the only one of these that's whoop, particularly interesting because I do think this moss might still be alive and I'm looking forward to seeing whether it can eventually colonize the whole jar or not. Like I said that many times, but it's worth reiterating. The whole point of this is to see how these do over time. You know, we had that one outside that I thought was dead and yet it has come back. So, there's nothing new to see here, but we're going to keep watching them. Okay, and as per usual, we have last but not least the front yard terraria. Growth-wise, there's not all that much interesting. I have positioned them here today in the same orientation that they normally sit in the yard because that's something I tend to, to lose during the video is which orientation they have, which is important because this one, you can see on this side, is kind of brown and dead. And this is the north side, so it's the side that's getting the least sun, or at least did this last week. And on the other side, south side, it's still bright green um, and doing very nicely. So I wanted to keep track of that. Now, something to be interesting, this is the first hot day we've had in a couple of weeks. It's not really hot, but like the sun's out, it's bright and shining. Um, and this is fairly warm to the touch. So we will see if this starts to cook and die from heat stress over the next couple of weeks, probably. Um, the other interesting thing that I wanted to note is that this terrarium, which is all dead and baking, at this point the top is starting to bulge up a little, so it's got some kind of positive pressure on the inside from the gases. Now, that's a good thing in part because it tells us we have a good seal, but it also means eventually if that continues to happen, uh, the lid on that is going to get blown off. And so this may lose its um, seal. And we've, this was a terrarium 1.0, so I think it's been sealed since January, and it's now April. So it's been a couple months. But we may not be able to follow this through to whatever its ultimate conclusion would be just because the structural uh, capacity of the jar may be exceeded by the gases produced inside of it. Which would be interesting if that does happen. It probably won't be exciting, it would be pop, but um, it would be meaningful. Anyway, I've lost track of the orientation now, but it doesn't really matter for this one, I don't think. Um, as for the 1.1 terrarium, creeping fig in here is still... It looks better than the indoor ones, worse than the backdoor ones. I think... This may have been one of the ones with the charcoal. I really need to go back and check that. Because if so, that would be fairly significant. It does look like it to me. I think I can see some in there. Oh, and there's a little algae over here. I don't know if the camera picks it up or if it's done this stupid thing where it wants to focus on everything but the jar. So here's where there's this spot of algae that I think is doing pretty well. That's probably the south side. This creeping fig is notable because it isn't uh, directly touching the edge of the jar. So it's probably a little healthier for that reason, but I think the air in here is fairly poisonous. The charcoal might be helping with that, but I think that's a lot of the problem. Too much water causes everything to rot too quickly, puts out like sulfur dioxide or something that poisons the plant. Um, in here we looked at it briefly, but I'd like to get a little... Uh, get it a little more attention. Not that I have much to say about it other than the really noticeable difference between the south side and north side. This reindeer moss here you'll notice looks different from all of the others. It's completely bleached. It is wet but there's nothing in it and there's a spot of algae living on the glass beneath it. So I think if it did have some in it, it may have migrated out into the soil. And there's a lot of seeping through. The um, false bottom you can see is here. And as you turn it, you can see that on this side, there's a good like half inch of sand or dirt or something below the false bottom. Um, 
So it is starting to make its way around the screen and, uh, you know, fill up down here. This north side is really not looking too great, but another interesting is that I put this in because there's this piece of wood here because there was algae on the bottom. There isn't really that I can see on it anymore, but there is in the soil below it, so it seems like the algae has moved. And it's turning a little brown in places. It may be that the algae is getting heat stressed and dying. Um, it does normally seem to live kind of on rotting stuff in semi-shade, so it may not be able to take full direct sunlight in the summer. But if it's kept moist, maybe it can. Oh, and that's really all. Well, you know, I think there's a spot of algae here. Well, maybe this isn't a hundred percent, yeah, and over here. So maybe this one isn't a hundred percent dead, just ninety-nine percent. And maybe if that algae can take off, it can perhaps absorb some of the gas, bring down the pressure, and keep this from blowing its top. Some of it could also just be the atmosphere here today. You know, one of these, I think this one, was top popped down and stayed down last week, and this week it comes back up again, no problem. So I think the, you know, the barometric pressure dropped, you know, millibar or two or something, and just kind of change the uh, the pressure distribution across the lid and enabled it to pop back up again. Otherwise, there's not really much to say out here today. I think I've rambled on long enough. Goodbye.